Hello, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Saturday. So we're going to go through the um, overnight guidance and and um, show you what's going on. All three models. So I want to know. I want you to know are all on the same page regarding uh, the next uh, two events, both the uh, minor event on uh, Tuesday night and what looks to be something more important for next weekend, which I'm going to address today for the first time. So uh, take a look at what's happening. Uh, we've got this first system that's already gone. I'm, I kind of jumped ahead here, but we know we're going to get some heavy rains tomorrow, which is great. Now, here's that next diver. I still think that there's a shot that we could see a, a, a coating to an, in, an inch or two cheap thrill uh, anywhere from, uh, say, uh, southern New Jersey, northeastward to uh, the lower Hudson Valley and, and through Connecticut, higher amounts as you go north and east of there. The, the trough is sharp enough and deep enough. So I'm just going to kind of wait to get into the short range. Maybe it'll, all it'll be will be a, a, a squall line that comes through uh, when the upper trough swings by. So, uh, But it won't amount to anything else. Uh, it doesn't look like the redevelopment is going to occur um, further south uh, unless there's some sort of last-minute surprise. But here we go for the longer range. And all the models, of course, you can see the very strong block that uh, is over Greenland and northern Canada here. Vortex pulls out. You've got cold air that's <clears throat> flowing in from Canada, and we have, and this is what we've been waiting for: to some sort of uh, disturbance in the flow uh, that's going to make for some sort, of, some kind of storm system. And then here you have it here on the models uh, that sort of phases with this little vortex that forms near Lake Winnipeg, lifts up to the northeast, maintains depth, and I think that's got to be important because we want to hold on to some cold air here as it uh, lifts northeastward and uh, then out and then we have the next one and then it looks like there's another one after that so i'm just going to say that if we can't do something uh in the next uh, couple of weeks with this blocking pattern um then we, might, we may be in serious trouble for the whole winter as far as uh, snow lovers are concerned there's never a guarantee even in the most ideal conditions uh that uh, you are going to get um anything you could wind up having all the indexes pointing to what you want, and if you just don't have the systems to work with, uh, you'll see nothing. Or you could even have the systems to work with, and it's everything is too far south or too far north or too far west. So, you know, that's why I don't approach this from the viewpoint that, oh, the numbers say this, the, the indexes say this, therefore this has to happen. That's just, just that's simply just not how weather works. Now, here's the European and uh, here's that diver for Wednesday. Has a pretty good trough. Again, same idea. Uh, it, it, you know, coating to an inch or two for somebody, not impossible. And then uh, you, you can see this really. Actually, the European is is of all the models, the European really uh, goes um, uh, uh, the strongest with uh, developing a very very strong storm uh, just offshore. So we're gonna uh, see how that plays. This is for. Uh, next weekend and then we move along and you can see there's ample opportunity for more because the Europeans view of the block is different from the GFS it, it really maintains much more of a signature block across Greenland coming from the east and then going back on the other side you've got this big upper high uh, that is over the Pacific and you have of course this established subtropical jet and one system after another is going to be coming in. So if this this pattern holds. It could be very bullish for snow down the road, uh, but I, it's always going to depend on the short range issues of where everything is, how much cold air, all the usual questions um, that uh, come up in this uh, sort of scenario. So uh, let's just real quick look at what's going on uh, short term. Okay, so we got this rain, and um, I want to just take a look at that. If it lets me, <laughs> doesn't seem to want to let me. Oh, that's because I'm on the wrong model. I have to jump back to the GFS. It's a shame that we can't see these um, uh, the maps for the precip of moisture for the European, but that's again a, the licensing issue uh, with regards to the model. Uh, it's European is private. It, it just, the other models are all government, and it's Europe tax dollars at work. Okay, so uh, there's our low. Uh, runs up to the west into northwest PA and then uh, crosses up into Canada. It deepens pretty rapidly. 
uh, we, we go from 1,002 millibars on the pressure to a, a 984, so we deepen 18 millibars in 24 hours. That's a pretty good measure of depth. And this is for 1 o'clock tom tomorrow afternoon. The front is on our doorstep. And uh, I'm thinking we could get a pretty good shot of rain and maybe even a thunderstorm out of this. So we'll just watch out for that into tomorrow afternoon. Then it dries out on Monday, shot of cold air. Uh, then it modifies somewhat because you've got that next diver already approaching for uh, Tuesday and Tuesday night. And you can see it's still generating um, some snows behind it with the upper trough. It's not really a lot. Uh, because all the development is going to be up to the north and even there now it's becoming less bullish because of how the system is structured but it's uh, the cold shot behind it so it should turn very cold wednesday into thursday and then you can see uh, on this model you start to get that southern system approaching um, by uh, late in the weekend the europeans got a slightly different uh, view on this but you know what we'll deal with it from run to run and uh, we will have uh, more on this later today as we start to digest all this stuff have a good Saturday and a good weekend.